All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. New office. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm standing up. Standing up now because that's just the way that this office is going to work. But I wanted to talk to you about uh, a vapey thing today. I've got this atomizer right here. This is the Equitas atomizer. I opened this in a vlog weeks and weeks ago before Vape Jam UK and actually took this with me to Vape Jam UK as well. I've just been having overall a really great time with this atomizer. It's got a nice easy build deck. It's got great airflow. It's got pretty versatile airflow as well. And in order to get to know this atomizer just a little bit better. What we're going to do is go up close as we always do. That's right. Quick, short, uppy, closey time. Go. All right, yeehaw. Well, let's take a look at this Equitas RDA right here. I guess we'll start with the deck. This is the deck. Yeah, it's a little bit dead rabbity, I guess. It's a little bit cosmonauty, I guess. It's a postless deck design even though there are kind of posts on the bottom four posts that come on come up from the base your leads are held in by uh flathead screws right here sorry flathead screws pretty wide flathead screws and they're real easy to get a hold of and crank those leads down and i'm hoping you can kind of see right there in the middle there's a little peak insulator with a hole in it that's where your juice is going to come up when you are squonking with it i don't have the squonk pin installed right now i've been using this as just a dripper because I really love it as a dripper. Taking a look at that 510 pin, yeah, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice protruding static insulated 510 pin. See on the bottom there, manufactured by Hellvape. Unlike the Dead Rabbit, this deck actually has a little bit of a juice well in there to kind of, you know, tuck your wicks down. And when you're squonking, your juice is going to go straight out into that little juice well right there. So if you got some cotton in there, yeah, it's going to wick great. It does have a little bit to travel up to your coils, up to your coils, so you're still relying lying on uh, you know, the wicking ability of your cotton when this is in squonk mode. And that's one of the reasons I really love it as a dripper because you can just blay your juice right through the middle. Your juice hits right in between the coils, gets everything all nice and beautifully wet. And then you kind of notice these little tabs right here. And those tabs coincide with little tabs on the barrel of the atomizer. And those little tabs lock in and actually control your airflow. There's a center moving metal part in here that doesn't come out. I've tried for the life of me. I believe it's not designed to come out, but when that twists on your deck, that's how you adjust your airflow. Allow me to demonstrate quickly. But your notch right there is going to go onto your notch right there on the atomizer. A real easy way to remember this is your airflow is here, full open. Your logo is right here. You line up the logo, the little Celtic symbol right there with the notch. And then when you have that barrel of the atomizer on, if you turn the full outside of it, that's how you adjust your airflow right there. You see how I turn the airflow down, turn the airflow open, turn the airflow down. And then your top cap right here, 810 compatible. It's just a uh, it's just a conical top cap design. And that just pops in there with one O-ring like that. And then you have this sort of etching, you know, kind of uh, aesthetics along the top. And it says Equitas across the top there. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm just going to wick this. It's real super easy to wick. So let's do that. Just going to be using some Kogendo cotton pads and my vape shears. I like to just cut a strip off of Kogendo cotton and then I pull both of the harder outer layers completely off and I roll the ends up. And that's kind of really all there is to it. I might have cut this side a little bit short, and that's kind of what you're going for. You want your wicks to just kind of sit, not be jammed in there, just kind of sit inside that little juice well. And this is where you're going to be able to see that hot bleh action when I bleh my juice through the middle. Yeah, you can kind of see. It just goes exactly where it needs to go. It goes all over the coils, goes all over the cotton. And then I'm just going to finish juicing this up. That looks sufficiently juiced to me when I press the button. Yeah, the vapors happen. So you just pop your top cap back on. Make sure your airflow is adjusted how you want it. I'm going to turn mine down just a little bit because that's where I like it. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to get back out to normal view. We're going to vape this guy.
honestly just been having a, a fantastic time with this atomizer. I love the vape experience that I get from it. The airflow is nice and smooth. It is very swooshy and just creates an overall really satisfying vape experience. The flavor on it, top notch. I mean, not amazing, not over the moon, not to, you know, you're gonna be able to taste things in your juices that you've never tasted before. But I'm vaping Caramel Corpse out of this. It's a juice I'm very familiar with and it tastes absolutely beautiful in this atomizer. And as I mentioned in the Uppy Closey, my favorite, favorite thing about this atomizer is your ability to just blow your juice right through the freaking middle. I'm a dripper guy. I run drippers more than I run squonkers. So having an atomizer that does both squonking and is also really good at dripping, that is a bonus in my opinion. Yeah, just bleh right through the middle and you know it's a landing directly on those coils. Your coils are the first thing that that juice is hitting. I've got the airflow right now set up in the bottom configuration. One of the things that you can do with this atomizer is flip the barrel upside down so you can either have this airflow slot angled low and up at your coils or you can flip it around and have it angled high and down at your coils. I've run it both ways multiple, multiple times and I really notice zero difference. I prefer to run mine at the top when I have the airflow set down low like this and I have the tendency to over drip maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's gonna run out. There's just, there's no way around it. The airflow is set really low. That juice well is fairly shallow. And if you over drip or over squonk, there's a good chance it just could come out the airflow on the bottom, which is, I li which is why I like to run them at the top. I get a, a stellar vape experience no matter where I run the airflow on this, honestly. And like I said before, I noticed very, I mean, zero. I'm just gonna say I've noticed zero difference. Perform performance, flavor, airflow, smoothness, swooshiness, it's all the same to me regardless of where the airflow is positioned. I do also kind of like running this airflow just a little bit closed off. I close it off about halfway. Full open, it's still smooth, it's still swooshy, it's a very uh, open, sort of clouds bro clouds, cloud chasing situation type of airflow. And when you close it off, at least when I close it off just a little bit, I get much more of a sort of warmer, dense, sort of a, you know, more of a restricted lung hit, which I like. I like having a little bit of resistance in that airflow. I don't like it just full, you know, breathing through a straw type of really open airflow. Bangin'. Bangin', this is a good atomizer, man. Uh, a few things I didn't mention, it, it's 24 millimeters around. Uh, it does it does come with a squonk pin as well, like I showed you in the Uppy Closey, where your juice will come out of when you're squonking it. Uh, the AFC on the inside isn't removable as far as I can tell, and I've really tried to get it out of there, which I probably shouldn't have tried so hard. I didn't damage it in any way, but I, uh, I damaged my finger. So don't try to take that little AFC ring out of the inside of this, there's just no point and I don't think you can do it anyway. It's 810 compatible on top and it does come with a randomly chosen drip tip. The one I got was kind of purpley and they make a note on the on least on all the websites that I visited. They make a note be sh to be sure to say, yeah, your drip tips, you, you can't choose the color. It's just sort of a, a random gamble. Whatever you get is what you get. And with that said, all the drip tips that I've seen for this look, look fairly cool. I like my DHD Nub 810s. They fit in here completely, perfectly, flawlessly flush, and they're just a really comfortable drip tip, and that's that's what I use in it. This one is stainless steel, but it does come in, you know, a bunch of different colors. It comes in black with like a silver Celtic symbol on it. It comes in black with a black Celtic symbol on it, which I think looks very cool. The gold actually looks pretty cool. And then it does come in that weird rainbow color for the rainbow people. I'm not one of the rainbow people. I don't like the rainbow finish on vape products, but it is an option for the rainbow people. More for them, right? Or more for you if you're a rainbow person. <gasps> rainbow people. There you go. Just made up a new thing. One of the rainbow people. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Anyway, you're going to need your vape budget hands for this. Ah! 
uh, not really. Clicking around the internet, I found it at a few places for around $34 to $35. So, you know, nice and easy on the vape budget hands. And for $35, bucks, I feel like you're getting one hell of an atomizer. It's a damn good vape. I would be much more inclined to use this atomizer much more frequently if it didn't have the big Celtic symbol on it and if it didn't have that sort of engraving around the top. And that's just a really personal nitpicky thing. I like much cleaner looking atomizers, the less engraving and less logos that are on the outside of an atomizer. I really like that. I really like that clean look. But I mean, with that said, I get it. I get where this comes from. I get where the names come from. I get why the Celtic symbol is on there. It all goes together. It's all part of the atomizer. But I would love, love, love if they ever released a engraving free version version of the Equitas, I would be all about that. But again, that's just, I mean, come on. <laughs> that's just a really, really personal nitpick on an otherwise really spectacular RDA. I don't know what else to say about it. It's great. I've enjoyed using it. Easy to build, easy to wick. It's got a shallow little juice well in there. It's squonkable. It's 24 millimeters. It's 810 compatible. And the vape experience that I get from it is a nice, warm, dense, and flavorful vape. Beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to throw some links down in the description to where you can check out the Equitas if you're into it. I want to do a shout out to Mr. Sherlock Ohms, one of my patrons, the Cool Kids Club, for teaching me how to pronounce Equitas, as well as Ambition Vapors, who created the Equitas. I've never met the guy. He seems like a very cool, genuine dude. We've only exchanged a few emails, but he's really proud of this, and he should be because it's a really awesome atomizer. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.